Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the Ruger Super Wrangler that just recently came out. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. These just hit the street a few days ago, maybe a week ago. And the interesting thing about this is we were filming a comparison between the Ruger Wrangler and the Diamondback Sidekick. And at the time, this didn't exist. So one of the comments I'd made is that the Wrangler only comes in 22 LR. Filmed the video, edited the video, and later that same day, Ruger announced this, the Super Wrangler which is a convertible, and the sidekick that we were comparing it to was a convertible as well. So it's just kind of funny how that worked out. So as soon as these became available, I got my hands on one, and here it sits. So what's so special about this compared to the Wrangler? Well, it's that convertible. So the cylinder that's in it right now is a 22LR cylinder, and it comes right from Ruger, right in the box, just the way you get it, with a 22 Magnum cylinder. And the 22 Magnum cylinder is actually labeled the 22 LR cylinder isn't. And that's common with a lot of these convertibles is they label one of the two cylinders. So you just have to know that if I've got the unlabeled one in it's 22 LR and the labeled one is Magnum. The convertible nature of these makes it kind of fun because you can use them for varminting and things like that where you need a little more power of the 22 Magnum or even at the range, it's funny, it's a little more fun. You get a bit of a flash, a little more of a bang, but you also have the ability to shoot significantly less expensive 22 LR, and at times 22 LR can be much easier to find. These are a single action loading gate style revolver. So you flip open the loading gate and you load the six rounds that it holds. And both of the cylinders are six round cylinders. It does have an interlock, so when the gate's open, the fire control system is disabled, and it also unlocks the cylinder so it'll turn freely, so it's easy to load. And then once you close the loading gate, the cylinder now locks up, and the fire control group is enabled. This is a single action, so to fire it, and I'm only going to, I'm going to pull the hammer back, so you have to pull the hammer back. To fire it, I'm going to hold the hammer, because this is a 22, and you shouldn't be uh, dry fire and rim fire, but that's the whole trigger pull right there. So I'll do it again. Right there, it broke. And then the hammer went down. Very nice, very crisp, very light trigger. So you thumb it back, pull the trigger, and it's real easy to stay on target, at least from the trigger perspective. Now the sights are an upgrade from typical revolvers in this category. They're actually sights. So there is a blade at the front, and there is a fully adjustable windage and height adjustable sight at the back. You adjust it with the screws on the top. That's the elevation screw, and here's the windage screw. And if they actually had some color to them, I would really like them. But at least it's not a gutter and a little tiny blade at the front. I probably will either replace these potentially with well, like Williams sights, because they make a lot of fiber optic sights for Rugers. I don't know if they make one for this one or not, but I'm going to find out or maybe paint at least a dot on the front ramp and maybe a dot for reference on either side of this. What I found is I could shoot this a little eat more easily than some of the gutter ones, but not as well as I probably could if I could actually see the sights. What happens is that blade just kind of grays out, and if your target has it got a red bullseye and a black frame around it, it front sight pretty much disappears. As far as did that make it not fun to shoot? No, it just made it a little more difficult to pull nice tight groups like you might want to do. So I wish they had actually put some sort of coloration on the sights, but I'm going to give them credit for actually putting sights on it. And that is an improvement over most of these in this particular territory. And I was doing the, the hammer so that I could pull the trigger, but I want to show you that it's got a really nice serrated spur, really easy to get a hold of, and it has a transfer bar safety. So these are drop safe. If it were to fire, if it were to drop, that would not, the hammer cannot hit the firing pin, so it can't hit the primer and fire off the round. This transfer bar, if the trigger's not pulled, is all the way here at the back. I'm sorry, it's, it's down, it's not up. Like you see it right here, it's ready to go. It was ready to transfer energy from the hammer to the bar to the firing pin. 
as I let the hammer down, you'll see it moves away. And by the time the hammer gets anywhere near the firing pin, if the trigger is not pulled, it can't hit the firing pin. So that transfer bar mechanism has pretty well proven. It's used in a lot of different guns, and it's a pretty solid drop safety mechanism. And that's really the only safety that's on these. Typically, it's the only safety that's needed on a gun like this. You can't accidentally pull the trigger because it's single action only. A few of the other features of it is it does have a cold hammer forged barrel. It's 5.5 inches, which is actually kind of nice. That's not common in 22s. And that gives it an overall length from heel to muzzle of 11 inches. So it's a little bit bigger. It weighs 30.7, 37.7 ounces, which sounds heavy, and, and it is kind of, but it doesn't feel that. It's balanced well enough, even though all the weight's in front of you, just the way the grip fits in your hand and the overall feel of it, it's comfortable to shoot. It doesn't feel like you've got a big old log out there in front of you that's wanting to unbalance. And I think with the fact that 22 has little or no recoil, the, the whole package just feels comfortable to shoot and it's enjoyable. The one you see here is the silver and black Cerakote. There's also a, a black and bronze Cerakote and an all black Cerakote. There's three variations of it at the moment. All three variants have a MSRP of 329. The grips on these are the single six pattern. So any single six grip should fit this. And these are a, a polymer checkered grip. But, and that's what it comes on all three of the variants that are available right now. Now it wouldn't surprise me if this thing turns out to be popular for Ruger to make the multiple flavors of it that they do with a lot of their guns and the dealer exclusives and all that or the distributor exclusives. But at the moment, those are the three variants. But the nice thing about the single six pattern grips is they've been around for so long that there's gonna be grips all over the place. If you don't like these grips, you could probably find something that you do. Is from a functional standpoint, the gun was reliable, it worked properly. I had a little trouble pulling tight groups only because I couldn't see the sights, but beyond that, I had no problems with the trigger and no malfunctions with it. So the other thing that was easy to do is changing the cylinder. So you open the loading gate, push this button so that you can pull this pin out, and the pin actually comes all the way out, and then the cylinder comes up through the, the open frame. This is the 22 LR cylinder. And if I were going to convert it to 22 Magnum, because it was designed at the factory to do this, and it came with it with part of the package, drop it in, take the pin, put it back in. It goes with the serrations out. Of course, it's a little difficult to do this when it's facing away from me. Make sure it goes all the way in. And the cylinder now rotates. By the way, loading it is easy. You drop them in one at a time through the loading gate. When a loading with a chamber is lined up like this, you hit this little plunger and that will eject your spent case. So you kind of, the best way to do it is to eject all six, just rotate your way around ejecting all six and then load six. Always load six. If you don't have six to load, load an empty shell. That way you don't risk dropping the hammer on an empty chamber. It's not good for a 22. Now, this is a Ruger. I haven't double checked. Most Rugers are drop safe, even their 22s. But every time you dry fire, I'm sorry, they're dry fire safe. But every time you dry fire a 22, you're taking your chances on damaging this little wall along here and potentially rendering the gun unusable. So just don't. You can load it with an empty, empty case and that will protect it in case you pull one more time than you were supposed to. Oh, the other thing I'll do, and I'm actually going to, in order to do this, I have to pull the cylinder back out, but I meant to show you the barrel, because I mentioned it was a cold hammer forged barrel. It is conventional rifling. Okay, line up on it. It's well machined, nice and smooth, no chatter marks. That stuff you see there is a little bit of residue that I apparently didn't get out when I cleaned it. That's not tooling marks. The, the barrel is actually well formed and nice and clean other than I didn't get it as clean as I thought I got it when I cleaned it, but that's not a, that's not a defect in the barrel. Overall, it's, it's a well-machined, well-made, well-designed, and smooth-functioning gun, which I've come to expect from Ruger, especially in their revolvers. So overall, if you're looking for a 22 Magnum convertible to 22 LR or vice versa, this would be a good choice for it, especially because the sights are replaceable. You could get better sights, make it easier to see, unlike the gutter style that you find on a lot of others. You could change the grips, 
fairly easily. They're going to be widely available even though the gun is new. So it's got a lot going for it. And at that MSRP of 329 there's a lot of gun here for what you're paying for it. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Rumble, Getter. And also consider supporting the channel on Player, which is formerly Utreon, where we could do videos that aren't allowed on YouTube anymore. And thank you.